So today is a momentous day because finally at long last I hold in my hands Sony's fresh new 2020 flagship phone, the Xperia 1 Mark II. It's been four long months unbelievably since I last had a play with Sony's sausage shaped smartphone. That was when it was originally launched back in February and now it's finally been released here in the UK the very day that this video goes live. So what we're going to do now is a full unboxing with an in-depth tour of the hardware, the software, everything you need to know if you're considering slapping down an awful lot of money for Sony's fresh new flagship phone. And for more on the latest greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So first up, as usual with Sony, it's a very plain, simple box, certainly for such a premium smartphone, something that's as revered as the Xperia 1 Mark II, definitely the most requested review I've had this year on Techspert. There is this most revered of handsets, we'll just set this aside for a second. So you've got your bit of quick start guide, warranty shenanigans, you've got your three pin UK plug, complete with pull out action. Nice. You've got your Type-C USB cable and you've got a pair of wired headphones as well or earphones to be more precise and they are actually 3.5mm efforts not those horrible Type-C ones because lo and behold Sony has brought back the 3.5mm headphone jack for the Xperia 1 Mark II. And these look like perfectly decent earphones for a bundled pair to be fair. Nice bit of Sony brand and you've got your silicone tip and you've got a selection of different size silicone tips as well to fit your own particular lug holes and even a little lapel clip. How lovely. So that right there is the highly exciting contents of the Xperia 1 Mark II box and now let's check out the phone itself. So like last year's Sony Xperia 1 flagship, the Xperia 1 Mark II is yet another 6.5 inch sausage shaped smartphone and I mean that in a very complimentary way. The combination of the slender form factor and those super skinny bezels means it's super comfortable to clutch, something that's helped along by those lovely rounded corners and the fact that 181 grams is actually fairly light compared with a lot of premium smartphones. It's definitely a very strong hand fit, very pleasing hand fit action there. The only aspect of the design that you're likely to struggle with is one handed use. You're not going to be able to stretch all the way up to the top end of that display unless you've got fingers like Slenderman. But luckily Sony has thrown in a nifty one-handed mode which I'll show you in a bit. And like the original Xperia 1, this year's Mark II smartphone boasts a Gorilla Glass 6 finish front and back so hopefully it should prove super durable and yeah it's fully IP68 water and dust resistant as well. So on the stathometer it's looking like a perfect 5 out of 5 for Sony's beast. Sadly the colour options are rather on the limited side, certainly here in the UK the only option that has shown up on Sony's website and also on the O2 website is black. So I'm definitely hoping that Sony releases some more funky colours really soon. A nice gorgeous Bordeaux red like what we had on the Xperia XZ3 a couple of years ago definitely would not go amiss. That said, the black model of the Xperia 1 Mark II looks very very smart indeed. Certainly looks and feels like a premium handset. There's lovely bit of tapered edging and everything like that. And of course one disadvantage of having a glass surface on your smartphones is they tend to get greased up pretty badly once you start actually touching and fondling them. But this black uh, finish seems to be hiding those greasy marks pretty well indeed. Anyway, it's time for me to stop waffling on, actually get the Xperia 1 Mark II all set up and then we can take a proper full on tour of the rest of this bad boy. So first step is slipping my SIM card inside. As you can see there, it's just a single SIM tray unfortunately. You can't slip dual SIMs into the Xperia 1 Mark II, but you do have space for a micro SD memory card. And that can be used to expand the onboard 256 gigs of storage by a further terabyte. So yeah, you're pretty well covered. So the Xperia 1 Mark II is all set up and ready for action. And immediately just turning the thing on, it's already good news because thank Thankfully, Sony has sorted out the fingerprint sensor issue from the original model. So yeah, no longer do you have a separate scanner and power button, it's all built into one just like it used to be on the Xperia's of yesteryear and it works an absolute treat. Unfortunately, Sony still hasn't got over its phobia of face unlock. There's absolutely no face unlock option here on the Xperia 1 Mark II. Not even that crap trusted face unlock which was built into Android and thankfully scrapped for Android 10 because it was a bit cack. Now that the phone is all set up and ready to go, you can really truly start to appreciate that gorgeous notch-free 21 by 9 cinema-wide display, which is very, very similar to the Xperia 1s. It's once again full on OLED tech, and yes, you get those beautiful 4K visuals. This thing is just crazy, crazy sharp. Powerful brightness as well on those top levels, no problems uh, with the outdoor visibility, and really poppy colours that proper smack you in the face. HDR playback is supported by streaming services like Netflix and of course you've got that Bravia tech back in action as well to improve the clarity and contrast of your videos on the fly. And if you plunge on into the display settings here on the Xperia 1 Mark II as well and go to image quality settings you'll see you can activate good old creator mode which makes a welcome return from the Xperia 1 Mark 1. 
This is once again powered by Sony's very own Cine Auto Tech and basically it allows cinephiles to watch supported flicks with the exact same picture settings as the director's final edit. That is of course assuming that the films were actually shot using Sony's own Cine Auto Tech which to be fair quite a lot of them are these days. And Sony has really improved the manual control that you have over the Xperia 1 Mark II's display output as well including adding in this funky white balance feature that will be particularly handy for photographers as you'll be able to see exactly what your snaps look like when they'll be printed on paper either before or after editing them. And of course there is a bit of a big ass elephant in the room when it comes to the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II's display and that is the complete lack of dedicated 90Hz refresh rate action. Something that you'll find on basically every other flagship phone that has launched in 2020 including quite a lot of budgety handsets as well like the Realme 6 which costs about a quarter of the Xperia 1 Mark II. Sony has added in a motion blur reduction feature which supposedly should help to give everything a nice smooth finish akin to a 90Hz refresh rate. Of course will it actually be as good? Well that's something I'll test out for my full review. Audio fans are definitely well catered for as usual though. Once again you get a meaty stereo speaker setup here on the Xperia 1 Mark II pumping balanced and crystal clear audio at your facial region. Let's check it out. It's a massive waste of your time and mine. It's Textpert Weekly. Now, I realise that a lot of these shows have basically just started with me winding on about how rubbish everything is. So certainly plenty of punch on that top volume. That'll cut through any kind of background noise and probably annoy the living piss out of your neighbours and such forth as well. Clarity isn't the strongest on that top volume, got to say, not compared to some other rivals, but still pretty good too. You've got full Dolby Atmos support on there as usual and Sony has also super pumped up its digital sound enhancement engine as well which basically makes your crappy old tracks sound a lot less crappy. It certainly works a treat on previous experiences. I'm expecting good things from this especially with a boost to the higher frequencies now apparently. And yes as has been widely reported while other manufacturers are busy killing off the headphone jack on their flagship smartphones Sony has reinstated that beautiful wee hole. Great stuff. And as usual from Sony it's a strong showing on the Bluetooth chops as well. So you've got full LDAC support for that high quality wireless streaming and of course you've got an accurate battery readout as well which is great stuff if you're going to be on the move all day you want to know exactly how much charge you got left going. And thankfully unlike the cheaper Xperia L4 you do get the latest version of Android, Android 10 here on the Xperia 1 Mark II as you'd kind of hope. You've also got a whole bunch of Sony bonus features thrown on there as well. So a good old side sense for instance makes a return. Still finding it a bit hit and miss to actually activate admittedly. Sometimes I find myself just loading apps along the edges of the uh, the phone instead of actually come on you can do it there's a very precise kind of motion there you go but once you've loaded it up you've then got shortcuts to a whole bunch of stuff including thankfully that one-handed mode which definitely proves very helpful indeed when you're struggling around with a uh, Wii in one hand and uh, the phone in the other. You've got full support for that remote play feature if you've got PS4 or something you can get a bit of God of War or something on the go while you're sat on the bog which is always great fun and loads of other cool features as well which I'm going to save for a full in-depth Sony Xperia 1 Mark II tips and tricks guide so stay tuned for that. Now let's move on to performance and of course packed inside the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II is Qualcomm's Snapdragon 865 its most premium platform which you would expect from a flagship handset especially one costing over a grand. And it's also appeared in a handful of more affordable handsets as well, the likes of the Realme X50 Pro, the Poco F2 Pro as well, although it is generally reserved for those more premium handsets. My experience with the 865 so far has been nothing but positive. It's definitely absolutely killer for any kind of mobile games, no worries at all. You get a super smooth frame rate, gorgeous HDR graphics on the games that support it, and so far it's proven pretty power efficient as well. And speaking of games, the Xperia 1 Mark II actually allows you to hug up a DualShock 4 controller using a special clamp in order to play your mobile games with a bit more comfort and that proper tactile feedback. I'll be doing a full-on test of that, so stay tuned for a dedicated video all about gaming on the Xperia 1 Mark II. In the meantime, to keep any benchmark fans sated, well, this is the result for Geekbench 5. Uh, quite a low single-core score there, surprisingly. I was expecting more around the sort of 700 to 800 mark, uh, but the multi-core score is nice and strong, only really beaten by the S20 and the OnePlus 8, according to the Geekbench benchmark charts. But to be honest, I wouldn't really read any Thing into that anyway you're gonna get top performance from the Xperia 1 Mark II no worries benchmarking eh, take it or leave it oh and before I forget you do have a dedicated 5G modem thrust into this thing as well so yeah full future proofing for your uh, connectivity and I believe it's Wi-Fi 6 as well uh, though I'll have to double check the specs on that and no 
always on the battery front either you get a 4000 milliamp cell stuffed away in here with the usual adaptive charging support as well to hopefully keep that performance strong over the months and years ahead and then the first for Sony you get full support for 15 watt wireless charging as well so not quite as swift as rivals such as Huawei but still pretty damn good definitely great to see here on the Xperia 1 Mark II. All of which fun and games brings us onto the part of the Xperia 1 Mark II flagship form which is the most exciting and probably the most arousing as well and I'm talking about that triple lens rear camera with that fresh bit of Zeiss branding. Now first of all yes I will be publishing a full in-depth Sony Xperia 1 Mark II camera review once I've had a good bit of time to play around with it and test out that photo and video quality but for those who are interested here's just a quick tour of the Xperia 1 Mark II's camera app and all of the various features. Now first of all it's dead simple to swap between the Xperia 1 Mark II's three rear lenses. You've got 12 megapixel primary lens, 12 megapixel ultra wide angle lens and a 12 megapixel telephoto lens. Nice easy to remember specs that's what we like. And if you squint really really close you'll also notice that you do get a time of flight lens stuck there on the back as well just to help with focus. And I have heard some people expressing concern that it's a 12 megapixel a mere 12 megapixel primary lens here on the Xperia 1 Mark II not a 48 or a 64 or even a 108 megapixel effort like on some rivals um, but you know what 12 megapixels should hopefully touch wood still get you plenty of detail in those shots and uh, the only issue I guess is that it means there's no pixel bin in here on the Xperia 1 Mark II which can help to brighten up some of those uh, darker shots certainly in more tricky lighting conditions but we'll see how this bad boy fares in those low light situations. They've got a handful of bonus uh, features here on the Xperia 1 Mark II as well such as for instance a bit of bokeh action to shoot a portrait shot uh, it just helps highlight your subject while blurring out the background. Uh, if we dive on into the video smarts as well uh, as you can see there you've got HDR uh, which you can use for high contrast situations and you can play around with the resolution as well get it all the way up to 4k resolution but at that ultra hd resolution you can't shoot at 60 frames per second you have to knock it down to full hd if you want that hyper realistic finish and you got a handful of other bonus modes as well if you click down here you can take a portrait selfie for instance nice bit of slow motion footage as well but definitely two of the more interesting and certainly unique camera features here on the xperia 1 mark ii are the cinema pro and photo pro modes cinema pro you'll know if you're a sony fan this is brilliant for shooting some very unique looking footage you've got a variety of filters that you can play around with including a bit of cool action soft soft monochrome you can shoot some really nice black and white footage uh, using this app so you basically got something to suit every particular mood once you've selected that you can then mess around with the likes of the iso levels to help brighten up this shot for instance because it's quite dark at the moment you select which of the three lenses you want to use let's use the ultra wide angle 16 millimeter effort for this one you can change the white balance as well uh, so let's move this to shade and you can even change the focus as well you can even have it switching between two manually set focal points as well if you want to get a very precise kind of shot or if you prefer just stick it on good old autofocus and i'm really glad that with cinema pro now on the xperia 1 mark ii you can play around uh, with the filters and everything uh, in a project once you've started recording which is something you couldn't really do before uh, with the original setup you can even change up the lenses and everything and then you'll notice that as you shoot each clip it appears here at the bottom so you can quickly select one view it back and at any point you can dive on in and you can rearrange them or you can delete any that you don't want so definitely still looks like a great bit of software very very cool if you want to really go to town and get some very visually flirtastic results flirtastic is that a word it certainly is now but the thing i'm really looking forward to checking out is the brand fresh new photo pro mode now this is where i think the true potential of the xperia 1 mark ii camera will be realized as you can see there just like if you were to buy an alpha brand DSLR you've got full manual controls over absolutely pretty much everything you would imagine so you can quickly swap between the three different lenses again just with a quick tap like so you can even do a proper precise bit of uh, zooming in action as well to get it lined up just the way you like and one of the biggest improvements of the Xperia 1 Mark II's camera tech compared with previous generations is the improved autofocus and that auto exposure as well which now allows you to burst shot at up to 20 frames per second and the camera itself actually makes up to 60 calculations per second with dedicated eye auto focus for humans and animals although probably not stuffed toys but of course you've got full control over the actual autofocus you can switch to manual focus if you like as well if you want to get again a very precise kind of shot with some uh, some funky blurred foreground or background action and you can also choose between a wide or central focus area and then as usual play arounds with the likes of the ISO levels the white balance you've got a good selection of stuff there you can also set up your own custom white balance options too so there you have it deep breath 
Uh, the Xperia 1 Mark II in a kind of nutshell. As you can see, a lot of very cool and unique features in there to talk about. But if you're looking forward to testing it out for my full review, and uh, a few hours after this video goes live, uh, Friday at 4 p.m., I'm going to try and start it a live Ask Me Anything centered on the Xperia 1 Mark II to commemorate its uh, launch, its eventual release here in the UK. So definitely come along, ask any questions that you may have, any burning uh, questions about the Xperia 1 Mark II or anything in general, to be perfectly honest. It's probably going to turn into a bit of a free-for- all like these live Ask Me Anythings always tend to do. And please do plug subscribe, ding that notifications bell, and have yourselves a lovely week, people. Cheers. Love you.